On April 12, 1912, the RMS Titanic crashed into an iceberg off the coast of Newfoundland and sank, taking 1,517 people down with it. At the time, the ship was claimed to be unsinkable. However, we clearly know that that was not the case. Many people have put forth theories as to why the ship sank, ranging from weather conditions to cutting costs with cheap materials. However, comprehensive studies have revealed that the likely culprit for the wreck was Steele's mechanism of brittle fracture. When a brittle fracture occurs, cracks rapidly propagate and fracture occurs without plastic deformation. Steel is normally a ductile material, it is able to undergo a large amount of plastic deformation before fracturing. Steel does not normally undergo brittle fracture. However, some ductile materials will experience brittle failure under three conditions. Low temperature, high impact loading, and flaws in the microstructure. During the Titanic sinkage, all three of these factors were present. After scientists recovered the first piece of steel from the hull from the wreckage in 1991, Sharpie impact test revealed that the steel fractured in a 100% brittle failure at the same icy temperatures in which the Titanic sank. More recovered steel samples revealed a ferrite perlite microstructure with large ferrite grains and large coarse perlite colonies. Large manganese sulfide and oxide particles were also present throughout the samples. However, sulfur content was unusually high, while manganese levels were low. Oxygen content was also high. Larger ferrite grains and perlite colonies are known to provide lower fracture toughness at low temperatures. Furthermore, manganese sulfide particles are known to act as crack initiators. However, it has been determined by researchers that the manganese sulfide particles likely had no effect on the steel's fracture. Although, manganese is a significant solid solutioning agent that increases toughness, it is thought that the low levels of manganese might have increased the ductile to brittle fracture transition temperature by as much as 10 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, High oxygen and sulfur contents disrupted the grain microstructure of the steel and increased the ductile to brittle transition temperature. Researchers determined that the steel from the Titanic's ductile to brittle fracture transition temperature was around 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. For comparison, most modern steel's transition temperatures are below negative 60 degrees Celsius. Combined with the below freezing temperatures of the water and the high impact load of the crash with the iceberg, brittle fracture of the steel is the most likely culprit behind the sinking of the Titanic. Additionally, several other flaws likely contributed to the sinkage of the Titanic. During this time period, many ship architects lacked understanding of stress concentrators so many ships were built with sharp corners that promoted brittle fracture. Also, the Titanic's lower compartments were not vertically waterproof. Although this was not a factor of sinkage, this flaw most likely sped up the Titanic's ocean descent. Despite the many different errors in the Titanic's design, it will forever serve as a warning for engineers to never ignore the transition to brittle failure for ductile materials. Thanks for watching.